Hey, what's going on, I-56 family? Mr. Anthony here. Glad, glad you are here. Listen, if I didn't say it in our last videos, I want to say it now. Merry Christmas. I hope you had a great week or weeks. Uh, I know some of you guys have multiple weeks off. Um, and I hope you had a great time with um, family, with friends, with everyone. Um, and listen, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you made it. Uh, and Happy New Year. I know with a new year comes... Uh, often goals and things that we want to achieve for 2024 uh, but before you do that always reflect on what God has done for you in 2023 and go into 2024 with a vision now we all have visions we all have goals but I want to set a goal for us as a family right I have two goals right one what well, three goals let's, let's do three I have three goals one get closer to God continuously um, build our relationship with God on a closer level than we had in 2023. Number two is to pray and read daily for at least five minutes, a minimum of five minutes every single day, uh, if you can, of course. And number three would be to continue to spread the gospel to our families, to our friends, to strangers, because listen, Jesus is the greatest of all time, right? He's the GOAT. God is the GOAT. Uh, and when we tell people about Jesus and when people get to experience God, they experience what we are experiencing, right? Who God is, his love for us, um, and what we are called to do on earth. So let's continue to spread the gospel. Those are the three goals that I have set for I-56 in the month of our year of 2024. Listen, it's the same mission, but just a new year, right? Same mission, new year, uh, where we just continue to let people know about the love of God. But without further ado, 2024 is going to pick up where it left off in 2023 with awesome videos, awesome content uh, for us to build our relationship with God. So without further ado, let's get into the video and I will see you after. Go I kids. Woo! Let's get it. I kids to the video. Let's start this year off with a bang. I'm back. Hang, Hang on, on for the loop. loop. Four, three, two, one. Jamie, we're so happy to have you back. Me too. For those of you who don't know, I took some time off from the show to grow my family. Please send me your pictures. <gasps> you know it. This is Kelsey. Oh, precious. Thank you. I appreciate it. I really missed you guys, but it was good getting to spend time with my family. So tell me, what did I miss? Ooh, uh, we had some dogs on set, we mm -hmm. danced, and we did eat it where it shared again. Oh, I'm bummed I missed that. Still have part of celery up my nose. We also did the sandstorm games. You would have loved that. Ooh, that sounds amazing. I missed a lot. We met a reindeer and we got the Lucia carpet steam clean. Oh my goodness. I knew that reindeer were real. Okay, how about mail? What did I miss? Oh, we've got mail. Yeah? Artwork questions, so much to get through. Ooh, Look at all of this. That's amazing. Thank hey. you, Melanie. Yes, very good job. Very artistic. And then we've got mail from Thailand. That's incredible. Yeah, and this is from Canada. How about a map update? Yes, we are so close to filling it out. Look, we got Nevada. Yay, Nevada. Good job. All right, we just got a few more. We got you. Well, let's count how many more we have. 15 away from filling up this map. And so many of you are from all over. We're getting mail from outside of the map. Fill up that map. Let's fill up that map. Woo! Our Loopsters know that this show is all about them. The Loop Show likes you. So let's get to know more about you. All right, how about this one? Okay, this one's from Anna. Tell us something fun we should know about you. I love to play basketball, go to church, and spend time with my friends. Oh, I'm allergic to salmon. Whoa. Oh my goodness, I like salmon. I'm so sorry you're allergic. Okay, this one is from Daxton, and Daxton says, I can make really realistic goose sounds. Ooh, that's cool. Can you make a goose sound? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually pretty impressed. Okay, tell us, Daxton, was that realistic? How did we do, Daxton? Leave in the comments, Daxton. Thank you for your uh, All right, let's hear from Kyle. I think tigers are cooler than Ricky. Well. That's 
so funny. I think, I mean, I'm not gonna argue with that. I mean, tigers are pretty yeah. cool. I mean, they, they are pretty have cool. stripes, um, they're orange, they don't have student loans. I mean, there's just so many they things don't have student loans. <laughs> that tigers have going for them. Okay, so I don't know who said this, but they said, I drank out of a toilet at the Discovery Center. <laughs> I, I like your vulnerability and your openness to just share everything about you. And I have so many questions. Please send us a follow-up postcard that gives us excruciating detail about how that happened. The Loop Show does not recommend drinking out of toilets, or at least ask your parents first. There we go, we're covered. You guys not only send us facts that you want us to know about. You also send us some wild challenges. So before we get to that, let's check this out. When I was in sixth grade, I was in gymnastics. And at my gym, there was two teams. And one of them was the competitive team. And that is the team that I wanted to be on. And what I know is I was older than a lot of the other girls. And so I had a lot of hope and a lot of excitement that I would get on this team. And when it came to tryouts, I feel like I did really good. I was excited. And then I heard I didn't make the team. And honestly, I was pretty disappointed. I spent the next year pushing through that disappointment and trying again. I practiced, I perfected some of my skills, tryouts roll around the next year, and I didn't make the team again. And man, that was even a bigger disappointment because this is now my second time trying out and I didn't make it. But I didn't lose hope. I tried again in the third year. I finally made the team and that was something that I was really proud of myself for pushing past that disappointment. There are many things I hoped for. Some of them I got, some of them worked out like the gymnastics team and others of them didn't. And if you're hopeful for a better tomorrow but hit a massive roadblock, what happens then? It's easy to feel hopeless when you get knocked down in pursuit of the future. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, we must accept finite disappointment but never lose infinite hope. But how do we possibly tap into something like this when we're knocked down on our butts? If you ignore obstacles or pretend that you have control over something that you don't, that's not accepting finite disappointment. Honestly, hold disappointment for what it is. And don't try to fake smile your way through it. It's okay to recognize, I'm disappointed. But also recognize this, that God's goodness doesn't stop with our disappointment. That when our best intentions fail, God is still working and He is still good and he, something good is still going to come out of this. We have that infinite hope. That infinite hope is not based on our strength, but God is strong and He never fails. And knowing this, we can get back up, start solving problems, try again, or imagine new goals that will push you closer to what God has called you to. With honesty and work, you can use hope to stir up love within yourself and within others. And before you know it, you're back on track moving forward. I've never met a Ryan I didn't like. Now the wheel of chicken cards. Oh, wait, I have a brilliant name. William. <gasps> so the wheel of cards is 
filled with a bunch of challenges that you want us to try. Mm -hmm. All brand new. So you ready, Jamie? Ready, let's give William a spin. Spin the wheel! Not William, William of Cards. William, uh, William, William of Cards. For a nickname, we should call him Wheel of Cards. <laughs> All right, let's see what it says. Ooh, wear 15 sweaters. At the same time? That sounds like a ton of fun. Okay. Bye, William. <laughs> fashion show, fashion show, fashion show at lunch. All right, let's do it. Do we have like a sweater song? Sweaters. Nothing's better than a sweater. There's Unless the weather's too hot. That's why sweaters are better in the weather where it's not. You're putting your sweaters on so fast. Second sweater, it's better than the first. Have you ever tried to wear more than one sweater? Whenever I go skiing sometimes. I think I'm on sweater number five. I don't know. And the temperature has already gone up. Oh my goodness, my arms are getting tired. The real challenge is getting any of these sweaters off. <laughs> You literally are doing an imitation of a sweater <laughs> on a clothing rack, just <laughs> hanging out. Oh, thank goodness, this one has a zipper. You look like a superhero. Oh, You're I'm the just... Bulk Hulk. Bulk Hulk, I'll take that. Oh, boy. Maybe we need to start putting it on our legs. Three, four, five. How are you already on 10? This is really <laughs> difficult. Like, I know it looks <laughs> like we are just tired from putting on clothes. Whoever suggested this? Very fun. Oh, oh. <laughs> Don't I, give up, Ricky. Yeah. I'm three away, baby. Three away? I'm three away. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really funny challenge. One more. That's <laughs> 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 goose. That's good, that's good. Yep, bam. Okay, I said it before and I'm gonna say it again. My armpits are sweating. Same, this challenge was <laughs> a lot of fun. Send us more things to try and we'll put it on the wheel. The Loop Show likes you, your challenges, and your big questions. Let's see what you wanna know. Oh, Hello, it's not okay. just one, it's two. Ooh. What does eternal life mean? What happens when we die? Now these are some big questions, so let's see if our friends at the Bible Project can help us out. If you know very much about the story of the Bible, you've probably heard that Jesus offers eternal life. <laughs> Sounds nice, but what does Jesus mean by eternal life? Well, Jesus adopted this phrase from the Hebrew scriptures. In English, it's translated eternal life or sometimes everlasting life, but the phrase literally translated from Hebrew is life unto the age. Life unto the age. What does that mean? Yeah, it's a dense phrase. And to understand it, we need to first talk about what an age is in the Bible. Let's do it. So the Hebrew word for age is olam and it refers to a period of time. What length of time? Well, any length of time, actually. And it can be in the past or in the future. What matters is that it's a period of time with some common attribute that remains constant. So, for example? So, like the time of Abraham and his descendants all the way up to Moses. The common attribute is it's the time of Moses' ancestors. And so Moses can say, remember the days of the age the years of past generations and elders. Okay. Or an age can be shorter and in the future. Like Samuel, who's going to spend his whole life serving in the temple. During his dedication, his mother Hannah calls this an age. So an age is a period of time that has a unique and constant characteristic. Exactly. And there could be all sorts of different ages, depending on what you want to focus on. You got it. And so someone could live in two ages at the same time if those ages happen to overlap. All right, so back to the phrase, life unto the age. What age is this talking about? Okay, so in the beginning of the biblical story, humans are made from the dust of the ground. This is a common biblical image for creatures that are mortal. That is, they live in an age where they could die. But God takes humanity and places them in a sacred garden where they're invited to experience a new and deeper kind of life. By eating from the tree of life. Yeah, we're told it offers them life unto the age, a life of infinite potential because it connects them to God's own divine life. But the story takes a turn. And instead of accepting life unto the age, they eat of the tree of knowing good and bad. 
Right. Taking from this tree means seizing life for themselves on their own terms, apart from God's wisdom. And so they're exiled from life unto the age, and they go into the age of death. They mistreat each other, they do what's right in their own eyes. Things get really violent. Exactly. And so the whole rest of the story of the Bible can be thought of as a choice between two different ages. The age of life on our own terms that leads to death, or the age of God's own life. And while humanity has rejected God's life, God promises he'll open the way back. Exactly. And it's that promise that ultimately leads the story to Jesus. He's presented as God's own life become human so that both ages overlap in him. He lives in the age of mortality and death and in the age of eternal life at the same time. And so he can offer people access to life unto the age. Right. It's like what Jesus says in the Gospel of John. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Yet, just like humanity rejected God's life in the garden, Jesus was rejected and put to death. But God's life is more powerful than death. And so Jesus rises from the dead, and he can offer God's life to others. Like the Gospel of John also says, Whoever trusts in him will not perish, but has eternal life. That is, life unto the age. Cool. Now, most people think of eternal life as something that happens after you die. But in the Bible, access to this age is something I can have right now. Yeah, remember, Jesus was the place where the age of God's life meets the age of death. And that means that when people trust him, they can experience eternal life here and now. But we also still live in the age of death. So what happens when I die? Well, just like death couldn't overpower God's eternal life in Jesus, similarly, we can remain alive to God even if we're physically dead. In the Bible, this is called being with Christ. And it's not talked about very much because it's not how the overall biblical story ends. The focus of the Bible is about when the age of life completely overcomes the age of death. And those who are with Christ are recreated to share in God's eternal life. A world where the age of death no longer has any power. Exactly. Because life that is fully connected to God's own eternal life and love is a life that will never end. I think it's beautiful the way that Bible Project explains these tough to grasp concepts. And we know that one short video isn't going to explain everything. So stay curious. We love that you are not afraid to ask big questions. Oh, and I thought of ways that people can send us mail. Like what? All right, so the first one is to fold their Loop Show mail into an airplane and fly it to our studio. Nice. Thank you. Or they could plant their Loop Show mail and then it grows into a big, beautiful Loop Show tree. I love it. Yes, thank you. Or learn to play a saxophone. That's it. Jamie, I'm so glad you're back. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I've missed you, Loopsters, and you, Ricky. So, I want to hear what adventures you've been on. If you want to send us something, artwork or letters, the Loop Show address is in the description below. You guys are awesome. This is going to be a big year. So, hold on tight and enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride. Welcome back, I-56 family. Listen, I really hope you enjoyed that video. Remember, our mission for 2024 is to continue to build our relationship with God, to pray and read for at least five minutes a day, and to continue to spread the good news and the love of God across our community, right? So that it can then be spread across other communities, to other communities, to other communities, and then to, to the world, right? Uh, because we serve a God who's amazing, a God who is loving. But remember, our slogan for this year of 2024 is New Year, same mission. Say it with me. New Year, same mission. To spread the gospel, to spread the good news of God, and to continue to build our relationship with God. But listen, I-56 family, I really hope you enjoyed that video. There'll be more coming in the following weeks, so tune back in. It's going to be absolutely awesome and amazing, but I'm so glad that you were able to make it. Uh, and so before I let you go, let's pray, and I'll see you next week. Cool? All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for allowing us to have an amazing year of 2023, God. We know that in the midst of it all, you were present, that you were guiding us through it, and we thank you for another year. Lord, I pray that as we enter in 2024, God, that you continue to be 
uh, who you are, God. Continue to do what you do, God, and continue to remind us of who you are. So, Lord, I pray that you continue to guide us and lead us. Allow us to seek you at all times this year, God, uh, through our ups and our downs, God. We know that you are faithful. Uh, continue to display your love to us in everything that we do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Listen, family. Can't wait to see you next week. Let's go. Until then, have a great week. If you're still on vacation, enjoy your vacation, which might end soon. But, hey, school's awesome, right? Let's get back into learning. God bless you. See you next week. Woo! Hi, kids. Let's get it.